What will life be like living under a one-world government? Well, welcome to this episode of Prophetic Perspective. We have a really exciting conversation to lay out before you with Brandon Holthouse, a pastor from Bakersfield, California. We'll tell you a little bit more about him. And obviously, Dave Bowen here with us today and Nathan Jones. I'm Tim Moore. Welcome. Well, Brandon, we've already been talking about the Great Reset yeah. and about the convergence of signs. So for our viewers, really quickly, what is the Great Reset? How does that play into a conversation about signs of the times? Sure. I think what everyone needs to understand is that's the globalist term for a global government. And that's the, the, what they're using to tout that to everybody in the corporations, in politics, and around the world. Well, why is that such a bad thing? I mean, we hear a lot of the hope that the global government's gonna bring peace and prosperity and the countries will stop fighting and war will end. Yeah. I mean, that sounds like a wonderful thing. Can humanity bring that about or do we have to wait for our savior? Interesting enough, it is a counterfeit of the messianic kingdom of Jesus Christ that the Satan is trying to perpetrate and copycat. And unfortunately, it sounds good, but underneath it, it is full of evil. It is going to enslave every human being on this planet. You know, when I was in the legislature, people would say, there ought to be a law. And I said, you know what, we got more than enough laws. How are they working out for us so far? Mm -hmm. The more laws you have, the bigger the government is, the less responsive it actually becomes. And to yes. think we're gonna give over to a global entity, power and authority over all of us, uh, that's not proven to work out Wait very well. Wait in the DMV line. Do you really want right. to, uh, everything to be controlled by the government? <laughs> right. I mean, really. Exactly. But you know, the interesting thing, which you see from the Bible, God doesn't want globalism. That's why he scattered the people in the Tower of Babel. He wants nationalism, language, culture, boundaries. And what we see is this movement towards globalism is a satanic movement, not a biblical movement. It's interesting too, as a pastor, follow, you know, people following and listening to what you say, and, and hopefully you understand what the Bible says about that. And you say, why is this good? Why do our leaders want this? You look at what we're putting laws in place and what we're saying is good, and you go, who thinks that's good? Right. But yet the Bible says, you know, God says, if that's what you want, I'll let you have what you want. That's right. Let me know how that works out. We gotta be called back to scripture because none of it is good. Even no. Israel, when they clamored for a king because they wanted to be yes. like all the other nations and the Lord through the prophet said, said Samuel, he said, you realize what this is gonna do. The yes. king's gonna take your money. He's gonna take your wealth. He's gonna take your resources. He's gonna take your sons. And so I have been your king. And Samuel lamented about the people's request. And the Lord said, they have not just embraced a king. They've rejected me, Yes. but give them what they want and they'll, they'll see how it works out. And truly it didn't always work out very well. No, and to add to this, the sin nature does not want to be responsible with freedom. It wants to be taken care of. And so down to the very individual, why would an individual want globalism? They want to be taken care of. They want a nanny state. Well, once they give over all their freedoms, let's paint a picture for the audience here. Yeah. For those out there who might not be believers, who think this great uh, reset is a wonderful thing, they want a global government. What does the Bible tell us is once this does happen and it will happen, what will life be like under it? Oh, tyranny, tyranny. You will lose all your freedoms. You, yeah, you'll be taken care of, but you'll be a slave to the system. The system will survey you. The system will track your buying and selling. The system will tell you what religion you will bow a knee to. And so it has huge implications. And the religion of wokeness, or what we call you know, Babylonianism, will be perpetrated on every individual through ESG scores and their die score. And that's what people are gonna have to comply with. Do, do you think, you look at our leadership and you think, why are they saying okay? Do you think the, the Lord has blinded them to the truth? Do you think, because they all want to be a global, they, they, why they're not responding, they want what's happening. Do you think that God's behind the scene kind of blinding them for that? I, I think, the God of this world, obviously here, let me start this. God has given them over and then Satan comes to blind them towards everything and make them follow suit. I think there is a heavy demonic activity going on with the leaders of this world to follow suit because they have been given over. And now their leader basically is Satan. I think that Psalm 2 captures exactly what we're seeing 
in our very day and age? Why are the nations in uproar and the peoples devising a vain thing, yeah. an empty, a hollow, a meaningless thing? The kings of the earth take their stand and the rulers take counsel against the Lord and his anointed. And here's what they're really trying to do even today, saying, let us cast, tear their fetters apart and cast away their cords from us. They want to be undone from any restraint, yeah. any constraints. And so even as people are celebrating transgression, what are they transgressing from? They're transgressing from the, the moral laws given by God, from the laws of, of worshiping and honoring Him, and yet he who sits in the heaven laughs. Yeah. Not because this is funny, not because it's a joking matter, but because all these efforts of mankind will come to naught. The Lord's will will be accomplished, and he really is still in control, although even sometimes Christians think, well, Lord, why aren't you taking control? He will manifest his glory in an even greater way at a time of his choosing. In his time. In his time, and, and I think that's why you're seeing the reasons for the tribulation that God is demonstrating. Look, I'm giving these people what they want and they're not coming back to me. They're not repenting. They're not doing what I told them to do and they're gonna destroy themselves. Yeah. I'm basically letting them destroy themselves. And if I don't intervene, every human being would perish from this. Exactly what scripture says, even right. during the tribulation. So you painted the picture of what this global government's gonna be like. Yeah. Then Jesus Christ returns mm -hmm. and he sets up his 1,000 king year kingdom of peace, righteousness, and justice. So that maybe just gave away the question, but <laughs> let's contrast that. What is the kingdom of Christ gonna be like living under that? And how do you get into the kingdom of Christ? Ah, very good. He told Nicodemus, you must be born again to be able to see the kingdom, to get entrance into the team kingdom. So you have to be saved. So anyone that's listening out here, you need to be saved, all right? And then under the kingdom, it is a rulership of God, the God-man, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, ruling on David's throne, on the political throne for a thousand years. Now, the Bible will make this point that he rules with a rod of iron, which means that in holiness and righteousness, he does not allow outward manifestations of evil and sin. It is put down immediately. And the great thing is for believers who are rewarded to rule and reign with him, we help him in that endeavor. And so the, the, the kingdom is, is a, a, a going back to the Garden of Eden as we walk in the cool of the day with him, but because there are people that enter the kingdom that are mortal and still have their sin nature, he must rule with a rod of iron to preserve righteousness and holiness. So it's a different aspect. That's why Revelation 20, when Satan is bound, he's, he, he's let go for a season. Why would you do that? Well, every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that Christ is Lord. Yeah. So Brandon, before we close, tell people how they can become a citizen of the kingdom of Christ. How can they be saved? Okay, it's real simple. The Bible declares that we're all sinners and, and that sin has separated us from God and could separate us from God for all eternity in a place called hell that he created for the devil and his angels. But he sent his son because he cared so much for us and loved us so much he didn't want us to go there. So he sent his son 2000 years ago to live the perfect life we couldn't live, to die on that cross and pay for our penalty of our sins against God. And he, he died and was buried and rose on the third day to offer eternal life to anyone who will believe in him. And that's all you need to do is believe in the person and work of Jesus Christ and you will be saved. The end of Psalm 2 says this, the beginning of verse 10, Now therefore, O kings, show discernment, take warning, O judges of the earth. But this message is not just for kings and judges, it's for all of us. Worship the Lord with reverence and rejoice with trembling. Do homage to the Son, that He not become angry and you perish in the way, for His wrath may soon be kindled. Folks, we know based on the entirety of the Word of God that His wrath will soon be kindled. But all who put faith in Him, as it says in the last passage, how blessed are all who take refuge in Him. We pray you indeed have taken refuge in the Son, Jesus Christ, our soon returning King.